hit you from the blind side. Yeah, I got you by my side, show you round back to back. Hey guys, it's Brooklyn, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new. So I know a lot of my viewers are either small YouTubers or people that want to start out their YouTube channel, and a big misconception is that 2020 is too late to start a channel, and I completely disagree. I feel like it's never really too late to start a YouTube channel because there's always room for more content. So that's why I'm making this video because I just want to give you all some advice and a couple tips that you guys can take to start your channel and grow your channels and if you guys already started your channel like I said I'm gonna be giving a bunch of tips on how to grow your channel so this advice can be applied to your channel at any point and yeah that's all I'm gonna say for now because I can tell this video is gonna be a long one because I have a lot of info to share but yeah let's just get right into the video so the first thing I want to talk about is video quantity and quality. So obviously before you upload a YouTube video, you have to plan, film, and edit it. And I really suggest that you guys don't rush this process at all. And you should really take the time to do those three steps multiple days before you actually want to post the video. And doing these things earlier than later allows yourself to take the time to make the video the best it can be. Whether it's spending more time editing it, maybe refilming it if you have to, anything. Spending more time on the video will improve the overall quality of it and you will notice a big difference from a rush video and a video you took time on. So the first step out of those three steps that I just told you is to plan your videos. And to start planning your videos, you obviously need to start off with a video idea. I keep a list on my phone of a bunch of different video ideas, whether I want to do them very soon or just anytime in the future. I just write everything down so I won't forget about the idea and I highly suggest that you do this so by the time you need to start planning your next video, you will have a bunch of video ideas already here. This will save you a lot of time because you won't have to stress about a video idea because you will have all those options already. A little bit later I will talk to you guys about how you can brainstorm and think of a bunch of different video ideas. Once you have your video idea picked out, you can start planning it by just writing down all of the talking points that you want to address in the video, any items you might want to show in the video, anything like that. Basically, it's like your rough draft of the video. And when I first write down all of my ideas for the video, it's a very rough and messy copy. And that's just to make sure that I get all of my ideas down as quickly as possible before I can forget anything. This was actually my rough draft plan for this video. And as you can see, I just have the whole page filled up with a bunch of different notes and talking points and even if they're not in order that's okay because you can organize that later once you have your rough copy of your plans done you can go in and make a second copy then this second copy will be much neater and this will be actually what you're using as your guide for when you're filming the video usually when I make the second copy I just do it on paper but for longer and more detailed videos like this one I actually just made a PowerPoint on my MacBook so as you can see I just have each slide of the PowerPoint filled with a bunch of text and talking points and that is just to keep me on track for this video. Planning your videos is super, super important because it adds a lot of structure to your video and it ensures that you will be covering all the information you want to talk about because it's really the worst when you're editing and you realize like, oh, I should have said this or if you just realize that you left out an important detail while filming. But if you plan your videos ahead, you won't face that dilemma at all because once you have your plan done, you know exactly what you need to include in the video. Having a plan also prevents you from getting distracted in your video or rambling or just talking about stuff that isn't important to the actual point of your video. But with that being said, your plan should not be an actual script of exactly what you want to say. It should just be talking points so that when you're talking, it'll flow like an actual conversation and it won't sound like you're trying to lecture someone. It sounds like you're just trying to talk to them. When they're just talking and following their talking points, it's a lot more natural feeling. So another reason why it's important to plan, film, and edit your videos early is because it helps you establish an actual posting schedule. Having a posting schedule is super important because it forces you to stay Stay consistent with your videos and the more you're consistently posting the higher chance you have of one of your videos blowing up which is of course a great thing and your posting schedule should be the same days and the same time every single week so that your viewers know when to expect a video from you so you should be aiming to post at least once a week, but I personally think it's best to post twice a week. So just to give you a quick comparison, if you post once a week for an entire year, that'll be a total of 52 videos, which means there's 52 chances for at least one of your videos to blow up. But if you post twice a week, then you have 104 chances to blow up. And obviously that's a big difference and it gives you a lot more opportunities. So posting twice a week is just a much better option. But even though it's best to post twice a week, don't sacrifice your video quality 
for the video quantity. If posting twice a week means that both of your videos that week are going to be mediocre, then just stick to posting once a week so that you can actually put out a good quality video that you were able to take time and put lots of effort and time into. Having a good quality video is always important because it keeps your viewers watching your video for longer and it makes them interested in your other videos because if you have one good quality video, that most likely means that your other videos are also good quality. <laughs> There's multiple factors that contribute to having a good quality video. The so one important thing you want to remember that will just improve your quality of your video drastically is just to think, would you watch your video? So even though your video is made for your audience, you have to think about would you actually watch it? If you can't sit down and watch one of your videos, that means anyone else on YouTube won't be able to do that either. So you want to make sure that the videos you're putting out is something that you would actually watch yourself. Another thing you can keep in mind is to think about the YouTubers you actually watch. What makes you keep going back to their videos. It might be their personality, their editing style, the way they present themselves, whatever that might be. Find that one trait that really keeps you going back to their channels and implement that into your own channel because that'll cause your audience to go back to your channel the same way you go back to their channels. A very important thing to remember while filming is to not force a video. Make sure that when you're filming a video you're in a good mood because if you're not feeling well or if you're in a bad mood it'll be very clear to see through the video and it'll just bring down the entire mood of the video. And this is definitely something I've learned over time. There's multiple videos on my channel where my mood is just down and it just brings down the mood of the entire video and makes me not even want to watch it. And like I said before, if I can't sit through and watch my own video, that means the audience and other viewers won't be able to sit down and watch it either. And the ones where I'm a lot happier and just in a better mood have a lot more views than the ones where I'm just less expressive and kind of down for obvious reasons because like I said, people don't want to watch someone if they're just in a bad mood. Like I said earlier, keeping a long list of video ideas is essential for planning and figuring out what videos you want to do in the future. And thinking of video ideas is honestly a pretty difficult thing, but the tips I'm about to share with you should be able to help you guys a little bit. So the first tip I have for you guys is to pay attention to the current trends and try to do them a little bit before they get extremely popular. So what I mean by that is if you make a trendy video right as it's on the rise of getting popular, then your video has a really good chance of blowing up because it's something that a lot of people are starting to search for. If you wait till a trend is super popular to do it, then it'll have lots of competition, there'll be lots of other videos flooding that search box, and especially if you're a small channel, if you're doing a trend while it's at its peak, then your video is not going to do so well because there'll be so much competition by so many bigger YouTubers that already have an audience of their own. One way you can catch a trend really early on is seeing what's trending on other apps but not on YouTube yet. So say something is trending on TikTok but it hasn't reached YouTube yet, you can take that TikTok trend and apply it to YouTube since it's something new that hasn't been seen on YouTube before but it's still a trending thing around people our age. I'll include a personal example of how I was able to catch a trend early. So when I did my MacBook unboxing, I did that the same week the MacBook itself was released. So a lot of people were searching that MacBook and seeing if they could find more information about it since it was brand new and just released. So since my unboxing video was uploaded when that first started to become a like trending search, my video ranked really well in search and that's why it got more views than my normal videos do. So that's just an example of how catching a trend early can really benefit you. Having a niche on your channel basically means keeping your videos to one specific category. And there's many different niches to choose from. Some are more specific and some are more broad. The niche on my channel is teen lifestyle and since it's more broad it allows me to make different types of videos but they all attract the same audience. Whether it's specific or broad, having a niche is super important because it tells your audience that they're going to like whatever video you're going to be putting out next. If they like one of your videos that fit into a certain niche, then they're going to like the other videos that also fit into that same niche. And because they like that niche that you have going on, they will keep going back to your videos and going back to your channel to watch whatever new content you're putting out. And that's how you gain subscribers and consistent viewers. It's definitely okay to experiment outside of your niche, but don't do it too often because then you'll build an audience of multiple niches and they really won't know what to come to your channel for if you're making a bunch of different types of content. Experimenting is good to do every now and then though because it allows you to see which content will perform the best on your channel. And seeing this is good because it helps you figure out who your target audience is and it helps you narrow down your niche as well. So if you're having a problem trying to determine what your niche is, you can experiment a little bit and see what videos perform better than others 
on your channel. One kind of big tip I have for you guys that I don't really hear any other YouTubers say is to not put out a bunch of personal content when you're first starting your channel. So by personal content, I mean like vlogs, Q&As, those type of videos. Those are really personal to your own lifestyle, but don't put those out when you're first starting your channel. And the reason for this is just because when you're first starting out, the YouTube community has no idea who you are. And because they don't know who you are, they're not going to care about like a day in your life or answering personal questions because they don't know you so having that information isn't going to be really relevant to them at all. Instead when you're starting out focus on content that people will be searching for because that's how you can get your channel recognized and once you start building an audience and a fan base that actually knows who you are and is consistently going back to your videos then you can start making personal content because you know that you already have some type of audience that knows you and will actually watch those videos. And if you really want to you can of course still make personal content when you're first starting out but just don't make it your main style of video because your channel really isn't going to grow that way. So the YouTube algorithm is a very complicated and long thing to understand, but taking the time to really learn about the algorithm, the analytics, SEO, and all those other components will be super beneficial to your channel in the long run, and I definitely recommend that you guys do it. Knowing and understanding the algorithm will be your main ticket to get picked up and noticed by YouTube. I will be going through some of the basics of the algorithm in this video, but I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out the YouTubers Annie Dubay and Katherine Manning. Both of their channels focus on educating other YouTubers on how they can grow their channels and they have a lot of videos about gaining subscribers, figuring out the algorithm, how to use the algorithm to your side, how you can use the algorithm to improve your videos and get your videos ranked in search, everything. They have a ton of videos on all that information and they break it down and explain it really really well so I definitely recommend you guys check out their channels because they will help you understand the algorithm really well. So SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization and learning how to max Maximize your SEO is what's going to get you ranked in search. So a big way you can boost your SEO is choosing relevant keywords and implementing them properly. And these keywords are going to be what people are actually searching and typing into that little search box. So choose keywords that are relevant to your video and the topic of your video and implement them into your title, description, and tags, and just continue repeating those keywords throughout your entire video because that'll tell YouTube that this is what your video is about and that when someone searches the term that you should pop up because that's what your video video is about. When you're uploading your video and you have to get to the step where you put in all your tags, make sure you're putting in as many tags as possible, but also keep them super relevant to your video. Your tags can be a mix of general and specific things, but you just want to make sure that they really all apply to your video because these are the terms that your video can show up under if someone searches them. The next thing is a really important thing to look for in your analytics and this is your CTR which means click-through rate. So an easy explanation of what the click-through rate is is that out of everyone that is seeing your video pop up on either the recommended page, under the search results, any browse feature it may be, what percent of them is actually clicking on your video? That is your click-through rate. And having a higher click-through rate is really good for the algorithm because it's telling YouTube that the people are actually clicking on this video so that tells YouTube to keep recommending it to more people because more and more people are going to continue clicking on it. Thumbnails are your biggest factor when it comes to your click-through rate. Thumbnails are basically only information that the people get of your video without having to actually click on it, you know, besides your title. But if you don't have a good thumbnail, then people probably won't click on your video. A good thumbnail is neat and eye-catching. And one thing you can think of while making your thumbnail is that is this something that would stand out to you if you saw it on your recommended page? Would it blend in with all the other videos or would it stand out to you and make you want to click on it? You want to make sure that your videos stand out so they just don't blend in with all the other videos that might be next to it. An easy way to get some inspiration for what your thumbnail should be is searching the topic of whatever the video is and going through the thumbnails on the search results and seeing which ones stand out to you, which ones would you actually click on, and you can take inspirations from the one you would actually click on and apply that to your own thumbnail. And I personally like all my thumbnails on my channel to follow the same theme because it kind of makes my channel look a little bit more neater and organized. And you can easily build a theme on your thumbnail by having things like font, filters, color palettes, graphics, all be kind of around the same in each of your thumbnails and this will just make sure that they match really well together. And I also have a video up on my channel on how I make my thumbnails if you guys are interested in that. I don't know if it'll be up in this corner or this corner. I don't know, it'll be up in one of those corners about how I make my thumbnails, so you guys can check that out after you watch this video. 
So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is staying motivated and staying motivated could be a super hard thing as a small YouTuber because it's definitely not an easy thing. YouTube is a hard thing. You have to dedicate a lot of time and jumping into it just isn't an easy thing. But I will try to share a couple things that might help you stay motivated. The first thing is really important. Do not compare your channel to anyone else's channel. There's definitely people that can upload like two or three videos on their channel and already blow up and have a lot of subscribers. But for other people that can have a couple hundred videos and still be like on a slow growth track and that is completely okay. Every channel truly grows at its own pace so you can't really compare it to anyone else's channel. The next thing is to set goals for your channel that you can actually accomplish and have control of. You can't control how fast you gain subscribers but you can control if you upload consistently, if you make each video a certain length, you can control your video quality, things like that are things you have control of so try to focus more on those things. And remember that quitting is not going to give you any more of a chance to be successful on YouTube. Staying consistent and uploading more is what's going to to actually grow your channel, not quitting. Another thing is to make sure that you're posting videos that you really enjoy making. YouTube is way more than just the numbers and if you're not enjoying the content you're putting out, then you should just stop making content. If you ever get stuck or confused or just frustrated while you're filming or editing, say you can't figure something out, don't get stressed. Just go onto YouTube and search anything. There's thousands and thousands of videos on every single thing you might need help with on YouTube and YouTube will really just be your best friend when it comes to learning things about your channel. Do some research before giving up because because it'll definitely be worth it. And yeah, that is finally it. That's everything I have to say in this video. I know it was definitely a long one, but there was a lot of information to share and I wanted to make sure that I got it all out to y'all. I can definitely go in depth about a lot of the topics I talked about. So if there's anything you want me to make another video about, just comment that down below and I can do that for you guys. And yeah, if you guys like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss my next video. And comment down below any other video ideas you have for me. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.